Hello everyone. So today I thought I'll talk to you about a very important topic that keeps coming over and over again, both in clinical exams, uh, written exams, but also in your clinical practice. And it's something that you should have, um, you should be absolutely clear about because of how much you encounter in daily practice so stay tuned this is the talk summary for um for this talk um i hope you'll find it useful don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already right so menopause is what we're talking about today so menopause the word itself is derived from greek words so the menace parts of it part of it means month and pause means stop Average age of menopause in the UK is between 50 and 51 years. So FSH is the first hormone that will start increasing, um, which signif signifies biological ageing. Um, the last hormonal marker to decrease is estradiol. Inhibin A and B um, fall over two to three years before the menopause. Estradiol levels below 20. Um, an elevated FSH of more than 50 uh, are consistent with um, cessation of ovarian function. So postmenopause bleeding is defined as any vaginal bleeding that happens one year after the menopause. It excludes expected bleeding with sequential hormone replacement therapy. Symptoms of menopause include hot flushes, night sweats, Headaches, palpitations, psychologically um, symptoms include mood, mood swings, irritability, nervousness, dysphoria, decreased libido, depression, loss of cognitive function and insomnia. Urogenital symptoms like atrophy include burning, itching, discomfort in the vagina, painful sexual intercourse and urinary tract infections. The peak uh, bone ma mass is at the age of 25 years. After that, it starts declining, um, especially when uh, um, when a woman reaches uh, the menopause. There's type one osteoporosis, where you have which involves the trabecular bone. You've got type two osteoporosis, which involves both trabecular and cortical bone, is independent of menopause, and it can affect both males and females. In postmenopausal women, osteoporosis is seen in one in three, fractures, um, and also accounts for fractures in half of the postmenopausal women. So HRT is the first line treatment for prevention or treatment of osteoporosis in menopausal um, women who are less than 50 years of age. Premature menopause, where there's bilateral oophorectomy before the age of 45, or, and in postmenopausal women, an increased risk of osteoporosis or osteoporotic fractures who are unable to tolerate um, other treatment should have bisphosphonates. So HRT should be prescribed um, and before prescribing it, um, no major risk factors for venous thromboembolism, strokes, coronary heart disease and breast cancer are present. This should be checked. Absolute contraindications are undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, hepatic disorders and acute vascular thrombosis. Um, HRT can be given orally, transdermal, subcutaneous, vaginal or intrauterine. So HRT um, is used to, to be is, is given so that the men, menopausal symptoms that it, it can adversely affect quality of life um, can be minimized. So there's two forms of HRT. So you have the monthly combined sequential HRT, which involves continuous estrogen and cyclical progesterogen or progesterone um, for 12 to 14 days and 28 day cycle. Regular and acceptable bleeding after the end of progesterone phase. Um, continuous combined HRT involves giving um, daily use of estrogen and progesterone or progesterone rather than cyclical use. It should induce amenorrhea usually within six months of um, use and should only be prescribed in postmenopausal women. Women without a uterus only need estrogen treatment. So unscheduled bleeding with HRT 
either as continuous combined or combined sequential therapy can lead to unscheduled vaginal bleeding or spotting which is unexpected or um or 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 completely out of the schedule so continuous combined regimes usually lead to amenorrhea and therefore should not cause cyclical or breakthrough bleeding with combined hrt up to 80 percent experience unscheduled bleeding or spotting in the first six months of treatment um, it should be evaluated after six months of therapy or if it um, occurs after amenorrhea. Unscheduled bleeding in combined continuous regime, uh, oral or transdermal, um, where there's irregular bleeding is expected to occur in 0 to 77% of women in the first few months of treatment um, and decreases after 6 to 12 months. And after 9 months, only 3 to 10% of women have it. In, sec in sequential regime, irregular bleeding can happen in 80 to 40% of women and less than 10% have recurrent episodes of breakthrough bleeding. So causes of uh, <clears throat> BMB include atrophic vag vaginitis, uterine polyps, fibromas, ovarian cysts, cancers, endometrial hyplasia or cancer. Other causes of unscheduled bleeding on HRT include poor compliance um, or non-compliance with treatment, drug interactions, for example, in women on liver-inducing drugs such as anti-epileptics, gastrointestinal symptoms, um, or pathology including a prolonged episode of diarrhea, undiagnosed or mild Crohn's disease or malabsorption syndrome, which can affect the bioavailability and pharmacokinetics of these medications in the circulation and higher endogenous estrogen production in women with obesity. So this abnormal uterine bleeding on HRT, it's important to exclude endometrial malignancies or pre-malignant conditions like complex hyplasia. Also benign things like polyps and fibroids should also be excluded. So hysteroscopy is, is something that is a gold standard investigation for assessing the uterine cavity in the UK, uh, potential risk of iatrogenic dissemination of malignant cells that might otherwise be localised to the endometrium. Also transvaginal ultrasound will help with assessing um, the, the, the uterus. The PIPEL endometrial sampling um, is obviously the histological evidence to um, confirm diagnosis and postmenopausal bleeding. Endometrial biopsy can miss up to 20% of focal lesions like endometrial polyps. Endometrial detection rate of PIPEL endometrial sampling was as high as 99.6%, implying it can be used as a first line investigation. Not enough evidence to recommend when re investigation um, should happen for recurrent PMB, um, but usually investigations are done after six months. Okay, so this is a very, very helpful table. Um, so you take a history from a patient and do physical examination um, for anyone who is um, who's having bleeding. Um, you then determine their HRT regime and duration. <clears throat> so if they're on sequential treatment and there is heavy prolonged or breakthrough bleeding in more than two cycles and you do a transvaginal ultrasound, if um, endometrial thickness is less than seven, then you just observe. If it's more than or equal to seven millimeters, then you do endometrial biopsy or hysteroscopy with biopsy. If the patient's on con combined continuous HRT um, and it's been less than six months, then reassure if there's no risk factors. If it's more than or equal to six months, then you do transvaginal ultrasound. And if endometrial thickness is less than five, um, then it's likely to be atrophic endometrium. And if endometrial thickness is more than five, or equal to five millimeters, then you do an endometrial biopsy or hysteroscopy with biopsy. So criteria for hysteroscopy, so multiple bleeding episodes, focal lesions on transvaginal ultrasound, endometrial thickness of more than five millimeters on continuous combined hormone replacement therapy, and endometrial thickness of greater than seven millimeters on sequential combined HRT, incomplete visualization of endometrial echo or fragmentation of endometrial um, echo and ultrasound high risk group with risk factors for endometrial disease or cancer, example, raised, raised body mass index, family history of, uh, of hereditary non polypoids colorectal cancer. So, with persistent bleeding on HRT, despite negative investigation, stopping HRT therapy but gradually phasing it is recommended 
um, to start women at the beginning of the menopause on um, sequential therapy and convert to the continuous method one year past the menopause or when 54 years of age. 80% of women will be postmenopause at that age. Sequential hormonal therapy, if the withdrawal bleeding is heavy or prolonged, increase the dose or change the type of progestogen or reduce the dose of estrogen may help. If bleeding occurs um, early in the progestogen phase, then increase the dose or change the type of breast, uh, progestogen. Right, so referral criteria for ultrasound to check endometrial thickness includes any bleeding out of six months of con continuous combined hormonal um, treatment therapy, even low risk women. Bleeding after amenorrhea has been established. Any bleeding in the first six months if there's any significant risk. Continuous combined hormonal uh, replacement therapy, persistent bleeding after six months or bleeding commencing after a period of amenorrhea, then it should be investigated. Bleeding pa patterns are better with lower estrogen doses and as women get older, after excluding endometrial pathology, increase the dose or change the type of proge proge progestogen um, which may help or fitting a myrena coil. Alternatively, change the type of um, HRT to sequential HRT. In triguterine um, system, so the, the device like Myrena is used in endometrial protection, continue with um, their estrogen only preparations. So avoid systemic effects and risk of systemic progest pro pro progestogen, induces in endometrial atrophy and regression of pre-existing small polyps and decreases formation of new endometrial polyps. So topical vaginal estrogen can help with significant urogenital symptoms no um there's no significant risk associated with this therapy and improves bleeding from lower genital tract uh, endometrial ablations can also help if there's poor response to other interventions so principles of management so appropriate counseling at the um, outset on continuous combined hormone replacement therapy bleeding in the first six months is usually acceptable to know the risk factors but bleed but needs investigating if any risk factors of bleeding after amenorrhea has been established on sequential hrt um, is the preferred option in peri perimenopausal women if on sequential hrt i usually check endometrial thickness using ultrasound within a week of the last pro progestogen pill expert opinion in refractory cases Right, treatment for unscheduled bleeding on hormone replacement therapy, so for sequential HRT. It's prolonged or heavy withdrawal bleed, increase the dose or change the dose, change the type of progestogen or reduce estrogen. Bleeding occurs only in progestogen phase, then increase the dose or change the type of progestogen. Spotting before withdrawal bleed, increase the estrogen dose. Zero irregular bleeding, change the regime or increase progestogen dose. It's painful bleeding, change type of progestogen. On continuous combined HRT, lower estrogen dose preparations are preferable, increase the dose or change the type of progestogen, convert to sequential HRT and have a regular bleed if other options fail. Other options, stop HRT, switch to non-oral HRT, offer myrena, offer surgery like endometrial ablation, resection or hysterectomy in refractory cases. Well, that's it. I hope this was um, a nice summary for you about managing PMB, um, different types of HRT, what to do when patients have bleeding on them, and also the different types that's available out there. Um, so you can you know exactly what sort of options um, uh, you can offer to patients. Um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.